Welcome to the Angels Win Podcast with former Angels broadcaster Victor Rojas, featuring Jeff Stoddart and Chuck Richter. And now it's time to talk about some baseball. Victor, take it away. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Angels Win Podcast, episode number 27. I'm Victor Rojas, along with Chuck Richter and Jeff Stoddart. We appreciate you joining us here on this uh, holiday edition of uh, the Angels Win Podcast. Cheers, everyone. Gentlemen, how are, Cheers. how's everything going this holiday season? Because I know I haven't finished um, I haven't finished my shopping yet. My shopping <laughs> I, I am is that guy. done. Your shopping's done? My shopping is done. I finished an animal. today. Mine so. is too. I just got the last package from Amazon delivered tonight. <laughs> oh, we're talking about having deliveries received. I haven't received everything, but I'm oh. done buying everything. Oh, nice. good. I think I have one or two things left to do, but I, I'm, it's like buy and then, yeah, okay, I'll pay the two-day shipping. Right. And uh, just to so make sure it gets here. It's it's brutal. It's brutal. Oh, I spent so God. much money on shipping. It's unbelievable. Oh. Yeah. I should have looked for everything on Amazon. Chuck's got this thing figured out. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. It, you avoid the crowds at the store, everybody just going nuts mm-hmm. and long uh, lines. Yeah, forget it. It's all Amazon these days. Jeff, I like yeah. that hockey sweater you got wearing. It's my uh, my North Pole Knicks. Nice. Um, yeah, this is my ugly sweater for. for I the thought year. about wearing my Simpson <laughs> ugly sweater, but you know I didn't want to st- stick out like a sore thumb. Then I think about it. That's, that's bad planning on our part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also had the Santa hat, but it doesn't fit over the headphones. So uh, I could have put on uh, Kim's Mrs. Claus outfit. There you go. I forget. Hmm. It's uh, and it's a good Mrs. Claus outfit, not this traditional crappy. <laughs> it's legit. I'm just telling you. Okay. Wow. All right. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll bust that out for you guys. That'd he's be amazing. Like, he's like, in fact, guys, I need to cut this off early. I need yeah, to... right. That's all you need. My ass cheeks hanging from my uh, my wife's Santa Miss Claus outfit. Oh my god! All right, yeah. get everybody in the Christmas spirit. Exactly. Episode twenty-seven. Off to a strong start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys did the episode uh, right after uh, Shohei. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll get right back into it, but but uh, right after Shohei. Uh, made his announcement that he was going to sign with the Los Angeles Dodgers. And since then, obviously, he's done that. Uh, there's been uh, a lot of hype and hoopla. And, uh, of course, uh, recently, Ben Verlander just stepped in all kinds of dog shit by saying <laughs> it was the greatest signing of all time as far as the Dodgers are concerned, which is just an awful comment. But uh, but whatever. Hey, people are, uh, like I tell my son the other day, I was like, uh, opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one. And uh, they are what they are. But, I, yeah. I, you know, uh, I I know that we're going to probably talk about a bunch of different things. I wasn't I didn't have the chance to or the opportunity to sit with you guys uh, during that podcast schedule didn't permit it. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not overly surprised. I think I texted you guys the week of uh, you did. You called it a couple of days before. I guess it was really a couple of days during the winter meetings that, you know, my feeling is the Dodgers. And that was before the whole Friday He's flying to Toronto thing and and the like. So I just felt that maybe that was just made sense. Now, I don't know if you guys covered it because I think it came out after the fact that Nez Bilello, his agent, gave the Angels an opportunity to, you know, kind of match or kind of get back in the game since uh, – and, and, and I will say that it's a an unbelievable gesture on the part of Shohei and his CAA, the agency, and Nez – to sit there and not just say to the Dodgers, done, done deal. Now they, they took it, they ran it back home yeah, uh, to the angels to see if there was any interest. And <clears throat> it's interesting because it opens up so many different avenues or cans of worms that, that makes you wonder what's going on. Right. It's just, it's so weird. Mm-hmm. And I think, I don't know if I texted with both of you or with just Jeff on an occasion. Cause I, I kind of popped through, the three, we have a group message thing that I have individual chats with, with both of you guys. And I, I want to say it was with Jeff and it's like, it makes you wonder, you know, who read the room wrong in August, um, right. as far as Shohei and, I, and by the room, I meaning, uh, you know, if it was already, if it was Perry, it was a combination thereof, John Carpino, yeah. uh, who's heavily involved in a lot of these things as to making the decision that we're going to keep Shohei 
and we're going to go out and make all these trades and see if we can make a run to try to get in as uh, you know, third, maybe a second wild card. If God, if everything fell perfectly and um, all in the hopes that you'd have an opportunity to resign Shohei. Right. And so, God, there, there's so many different ways you can go on this. I still am of the belief that you should have traded Shohei when you had the opportunity to do so because you knew the worst case scenario as it's playing out right. is a comp pick between the second and third rounds. And you certainly could have done much better than that, I feel. And not only that, you could have done that. And then, as we talked about back in August uh, during the trade deadline, is having rolled into the off season as a player for Shohei services and sit there mm -hmm. and go, not only do we want you, look what we did when we traded you. Right. We've restocked some guys. We're going to spend some money. Now you've got a whole story to tell, which is what it's all about when you're pitching somebody, right? Negotiating one-on-one. -on -one. What's the story? What's the value that uh, the value proposition that you bring to the table? And if you're the angels, that is the value proposi proposition. You, you're thin in your, your your minor league system. Look what we did, and we want you to be a part of this. We want you to succeed with the young nucleus we have, with the players that we brought in because of you, and we want you here. And then if it doesn't work out, well, then, hell, you gave it your best shot, and you, you made your farm system a little bit better. And I think that's the biggest thing, the biggest miss of it all, that somebody said, no, we're not trading them. That story that Verducci came out said, now the Angels are not trading him. And they did it on a Wednesday. What is it, like a Wednesday? Tuesday yeah. was the trade deadline. It's like, why yep. are you, what the hell, what's right. going on? Right. Um, it's just a cluster. It just, it just played out so awfully. And, and then on top of that, Nez took it back to the Angels at the very end. And then they did match. And it was the same structure, same deal that they pitched to the San Francisco Giants. Mm -hmm. They could, could have done it to the Angels. And if you're already, what do you care? You know, it's like you're in your low 80s. You're, you're really just kicking the can down the road for the next owner. And sure. if anything, it adds value to your organization, you think. Um, you recoup some of the money. If you want to sell in five years, knock yourself out. You don't have, it's not, it's not on your dime. And the valuations of these organizations continue to go up. So I know I'm going to a bunch of different directions, but that's what that one decision, well, two decisions, the decision not to trade them and the decision when given the opportunity at the very end to swoop in and say, no, he's our guy, even go to a 700 million and $1 just to be that guy and <laughs> stick it to the Dodgers or whomever else. And just, and, and you know what I'm saying? And you failed, 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 failed miserably. That all being said, now you're not on the hook for the money. Shohei's gone, two-way player, fantastic, a unicorn, unbelievable talent, no question about it, marketing genius, uh, revenue streams out the yin-yang coming from left and right. But now you don't have to worry about it. It's done. It's put to bed. So you can break down all you want. You can be pissed. You can whatever, upset, disappointed, all of those things rolled into one. But now you're not on the hook in the, for the money. So now where are the angels? Who are they? What's their identity? And what should angel fans expect going forward? I would think that with the young nucleus that you have, it's still a very difficult div division. The world champions are in the division. Uh, Astros aren't going anywhere. Seattle, shit, who knows? It's another reimagining by Jerry DePoto, so who knows? Um, <laughs> and Oakland is what Oakland is, right? So there's, there's an opportunity, I think, if you do it right. But at the end of the day, like, what are they going to do? And nobody's yeah. talking. Nobody shares their information. Right. Nobody says anything. The Royals, <laughs> who I, I can knock rather easily – not because I'm wearing the Royals colors right now, <laughs> but for a lot of different reasons, they've at least said they're going to go spend some money and they've spent some money, whether it's throwing money out the window, you know, that remains to be seen, but in that central division, anybody can win. Anybody can win. Minnesota's cutting back because they don't have a TV contract. 
So they've already started to let go guys. So the White Sox are kind of in a this re kind of imagining themselves with the new general manager. So Kansas City said, well, let's go. Let's see if we can try to win a division. Yep. What are the Angels doing? And uh, Jeff, I mean, you can run point, but I wanted to give you guys my two cents on the Shohei thing. Yeah. Um, look, I, I love the guy. I think he's an incredible talent, but okay, mm -hmm. he's no longer here. He's over there. So now let's focus on the Angels and let's go forward. That's that's it. You can't what if and 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 the like because, you know, it's hindsight's always going to be twenty twenty. Sure. But like, what do you do as an organization going forward? And that you know, good God, the whole coaching thing, the whole Clint Hurdle thing, the rumor I heard about basically one number for every coaching position, no negotiations, kind of a take it or leave it for everybody. And hmm. Clint Hurdle decided not to take it. I just like what's going on? Like what? What's the end game here? I, and that's what I don't understand. And, and I don't know point, that we ever will. And real quick, Jeff, and to your point on a previous podcast too, uh, Victor, you said to, to get Clint Hurdle from to leave Florida by the beach in retirement, you got to pay a little extra to get a guy like that to yeah. leave his good situation to come and travel with the team and move to Anaheim. And, you know, that's a lot to give up, you know, at his stage of his life. And you're just going to give a blanket number and say, hey, if you want to work here, this is the price. And you're not going to try to get what would have been the best bench coach, perhaps, uh, in baseball by Ron Washington's side. No. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Back to you, Jeff. I mean, I just, I wanted to add that. No, it's a good point. And, you know, the, the what we had heard, and the, I, I think the reporting on it was the offer that they made to Clint would have, would have made him the 18th or 19th highest paid, highest paid bench coach in Major League Baseball. For a guy with that <laughs> kind of pedigree and right. background and someone that legitimately could have very easily have been the manager for the team. So now you're basically in a position where you could have had two rock solid managers, one being the manager, one being the bench coach. This is a team that could, or a, a leadership that could potentially shepherd, um, you know, the young talent that they've got there, maybe try to, um, reinvigorate the the veterans especially like a rendon i don't get it i don't know if he if if there's penny pinching going on because you know what whatever whatever moment of clarity that already thought that he had in december or january of last year where he's like i'm not selling the team i'm all in we're gonna re-sign shohei that we're gonna take this to the moon and now that's all fallen apart. Is he back to a place now where he's going to want to sell? So he's kind of, I don't know what to make of it. I, right. I, I, I really don't. And I don't know if you guys have thoughts on what, what could be happening. No, no transactions of note have taken place of since, yeah. since, since the show. Hey deal. Um, you know, there was a lot of fans initially that's like, okay, well, I'm glad we didn't burn all of that money on one player. Now we can go out and invest that money in in the other parts and pieces that we need. And my initial thought was, what, you know, what makes you think, based off of this leadership team's history, that they are going to spend money wisely and bring in the parts and pieces that are needed to make this happen. And then all the coaching stuff started bubbling up. And I, I just don't know what the hell's going on over there. Yeah. In addition to the, the coaching stuff, I also learned that um, a well-known uh, person that I can't mention his name uh, applied for the assistant general manager job with the angels and was, was offered peanuts for that position. And it, that in addition to Clint hurdle, could have added two value. I mean, really well-known guys that with experience and that would add a ton of value to this franchise going forward. And yeah. uh, it, it's, it's very frustrating because to your point, Jeff, we have all this Shohei Otani money to spend, right? Allegedly. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> yeah, allegedly. Right. allegedly, exactly. And nothing's being done. And you would have thought that a quick strike would have been made to have something. We talked about this before. You know, if Otani's not going to sign here, can we have a plan B, C, D, you know, there to um, take action on? And there, there hasn't been any of that. And, and maybe they're, they're waiting for a market, a Yamamoto, um, Bellinger, who knows? I have no idea. But, um, but those, it, those it, are higher echelon guys. Like, why, why right. would you, why would you think they would want to come in here? on Yamamoto? I mean, unless you're, no, just... they're not in on him at all. Right. But I mean, it's well, like, maybe, why... maybe Snell is waiting. Maybe Snell's agent is waiting to see what Yamamoto gets to say, okay, well, if this guy who's never pitched one pitch in the majors can get $300 million, Snell being a Boris, you know, a uh, guy. Yeah, is that 300 million? Is that what he's asking from a salary perspective? Is that factoring in the posting fee? So it, it, I am sure it's the posting fee too. Yeah. You know. So look, the, the top end of the market's always going to get the top end of the market. I mean, I mean, what are you pinching pennies? Like, what are you yeah. worried about? If you're Blake Snell's agent, you're worried, you're worried that a, an import you know, might, might set the market for you or depress the market, you know, in an adverse yeah. manner. I just, I don't, I don't get it. You know, I don't look at the end of the day, Blake Snell is who he is. Yeah. He's won a couple of Cy Youngs. There's no doubt about yeah. it, but he's a five inning guy, throws a shit ton of pitches and yeah. he's going to wear your bullpen out every, every fifth day because he never works deep in games. That's, that's Blake Snell. doesn't make him mm -hmm. a bad guy. He's still, you know, cream of the, cream of the crop. He's going to get his money. Somebody's right. going to pay it. Uh, but he is what he is, right? Right. Um, aside from that, and Yamamoto, you know, then you go to the next level uh, as far as pitchers are concerned. And, you know, is it, is it Jordan Montgomery? Is it Marcus Stroman? You know, mm -hmm. uh, and then you go into the bullpen side. So I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get the whole idea. Look, the market is what the market is. You're going to have the holidays now. Most organizations are shut down now through, you know, January, whatever it is, January 2nd is, I think, a Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, maybe they'll come back on the 5th or the, or the week after. So they're shut down. doesn't mean that GMs and agents aren't talking. It doesn't mean that uh, things can't happen over the next two weeks, but it, you know, it becomes a little bit more difficult. And I think when you start seeing a, report time and we're getting closer and closer to you know pitchers and catchers getting to spring training then i think things start to percolate a little bit more you know i i i just you know just going back to the whole angel thing and the situation with the coaches and the like it, it begs the question and, it, and it's a fair question it's like what was ron washington sold yeah because if you're Ron and you're in Atlanta and of course you wanted your Ben Jones to get back in as a manager and he's had plenty of opportunities. He's met, he's interviewed a lot of different places, you know, since the last time he managed in Texas to getting this job and it just never worked out for him. But, you know, was he sold a bill of goods? Hey, we're going after Shohei, you know, going after him whatever that means, right. whatever their best foot forward is, clearly wasn't at that level. They turned it down. Um, the Angels did. And if you're not signing Shohei, then what's the backup plan? And then are we going to go to plan B, C, or D? Um, and are we going to be able to field a competitive team? And, you know, and, so that, then that's that's where you start to wonder, well, what the hell's going on? If, if, if you can't sign Clint Hurdle, and, and look, I, I know coaches aren't going to make a huge difference, but when you've got a brand and perception problem like the Angels have, and I, I think it, it is a it, it's a serious problem. And then now with Shohei gone, it's an even bigger problem. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. The last thing you should be doing is continuing to punch yourself in the nuts and screwing <laughs> your brand even further. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what the angels have done, unfortunately. And so look, I, I get squeezing every last dime. I think there is a legitimate concern, not only with the angels, but a lot of teams in major league baseball 
that the money train is going to dry up from a broadcast rights perspective. And so you don't want to, you know, overextend yourself, if you will, if you're not gaining or getting your, depending on the team, right? 50 to 100, 125 million a year in broadcast right. rights because you know, some teams, the, the Twins do not have a broadcast partner going to next year. The Guardians don't have a broadcast partner next year. The Rangers don't have a broadcast partner yet, as of yet, if I'm not mistaken, until next year. Uh, Roots is going away. So Seattle, Colorado, Pittsburgh, uh, Houston as well. Houston's already doing something, I think, with the Rockets. Um, those teams are going to lose some money because AT&T has pulled out of Roots, and that's that's just going away. So I think there's a legitimate concern across baseball in general that, all right, where do we make up that revenue? Well, you know, if you had Shohei, you could make up that revenue, right? right? If you field a competitive team, legitimate team, uh, you, you know, you could make up some of that revenue. As it stands right now, and I always said this, and I jokingly said this, that the Angels fan base is a very loyal one. You could close your eyes, you could open the gates, and you're going to draw two and a half million fans. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's no knock on Angels fans. It's just, you know, it's it's a very family friendly atmosphere. Yeah, uh, still somewhat affordable as it relates to baseball, and um. I think the Angels do a fantastic job from a game presentation, considering where they are. It's a ballpark that's 60 freaking years old beyond that. Um, But I think where you start to take a hit or you're going to even take more of a hit is actual people showing up at the ballpark. You know, selling season tickets is one thing, selling single game tickets is another. But physically, the whole idea after getting a ticket purchased is getting people to drive to the ballpark and pay for parking, to go into the ballpark and buy a hot dog or hamburger or beers or souvenirs. That's where your, that's where your money train lies, right? It's the, the old per caps. You want people, butts and seats. You need people to show up. And if you're a mediocre team that just lost Shohei Otani and you've got this negative aura about you, how mm-hmm. in God's name are you going to get people to come to the ballpark? You know, I mean, that that's, that's I think, where... I, I, I don't know. I don't know. There absolutely needs to be a change at the top. Uh, you know, Artie's not going anywhere. And I know John's his guy. And I like John. I've, I've gotten along with him. He, he and I are very friendly. But something needs to change. Or somebody needs to speak up. Because if we're constantly, and it's not just us, it's pretty much everybody. Right. National media, fans, yeah. other podcasters. Everybody is seeing it. Everybody is talking about it. So clearly there's an issue. Now, maybe John and Artie, Dennis, Dennis is a little bit more off to the side now, but but that triumvirate that runs the team, maybe they are just content with like, all right, let's bottom line this thing. You know, every year, let's just maximize profits and let's see where this where this thing goes as far as the broadcasting uh goes um, it sure feels like that's what they did by not trading otani and keeping him you know putting butts in the seats in august in september rather than thinking clearly and thinking about the future going forward well how short-sighted do you think that is that for a five-week stretch you're going to make the nut that's going to cover you for 24, 25, 26, 27. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, and again, I know we've had this conversation before and uh, somebody on Twitter said, well, if they, if they trade Joe, Hey, they'll lose $10 million in um, sponsorship deal, which I, I don't, I don't know why you would ever write a contract that would give the spot. First of all, that's backloaded to the point that five weeks, six weeks left in the season. That's where the bulk of the money comes from a sponsorship perspective, that's just mm-hmm. idiotic if that actually happened. Yeah. Um, Cause most of those are front loaded and those are already paid for before you even get to that point. Um, but then again, it's possible as we see things play out. It's very possible. Um, look, I, I, I'm still going to root for the team. I still want them to do well. I still want these yeah. guys this this young nucleus to, 
be uh, supplemented with some some talent, and there's plenty of talent still out there, and there's still plenty of off season. But you would think that if you know you're not going to sign Shohei at the dollars, because you know where you know where the market was at, you, you know where it was trending. I mean, you, everyone knew four or five hundred million was. Everyone talked about that crap in, in July and August. So you knew where it was going. And if it was going to go north of that, I was like, all right, let's just, if he signs somewhere else, let's sign X. Let's concentrate our efforts on this guy. Um, and yeah. it, it would have been something so easily following the Dodgers signing or announcement of, hey, we signed X player, whoever that is, or two players, whatever the case may be. Instead, you, it's a leak here of Clint Hurdle not sign. I don't know. It's just, it just, uh, it, it is such a poor display of brand management. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that should be studied in school <laughs> going to forward. Never, to never follow again. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't I, get it either. I mean, you would have also thought that. Only, hey, real quick. The only thing that the potential could be is that the valuations of teams continue to just go upward. The trajectory is this way, right? And now that you've taken, you know, 30 million out of the equation or, well, I guess going forward because Shohei made 30 this year. Yeah. 40 million or $45 million. And you take that out of the equation. And all of a sudden you start playing with that payroll. It's 150, 160, the second largest market in the country. You get a media savvy individual, get their wheels spinning that, Hey, you could start your own network and you can monetize this. And if you buy the stadium and the land from the city that you could revive and, and you basically are holding on to your cash so that you do sell, you end up putting the team back up on, on the market. Um, and it looks a lot more attractive than all of a sudden you're, you're butt up against $237 million of CBT. And it's like, Holy shit. You know, we go a dollar over and we're paying tax on that. And then we're losing, uh, you know, money on the, on the draft and mm. international signing. So I'm not saying that's the case, but you know, if I'm thinking about the other side, maybe, maybe yeah. that's why, you know, I don't know. I'm perplexed. What about you, Jeff? I mean, I... yeah, I, I, I mean, like I alluded to earlier, I, I sit here and wonder, as you know, as Victor mentioned earlier, Artie's a guy in his, you know, in his early 80s. Does he still have the passion for running the team and for trying to bring forward a winner? Or did he go into it? into 2023 with that in mind and the whole thing is now kind of blown up and you know as victor kind of unpacked there is he looking at this more like okay let's let's look at my exit strategy yeah and <laughs> and if that's the case godspeed like let's go let's get it into the hands of somebody that yeah that, that wants to to make moves because as we talk about the bad look of of the how bad the angels have looked right through all of this for those of you listening please understand that's not just for us it's not a bad look for fans it's not just a bad look for you know the baseball community. it's a bad look for potential players that want like why would i want to come to this team I and mean, that's right? out Is there it, already by the oh, way oh yeah it, it's but, from coaches, managers, minor league yep. players, it's it's the trust me because I've heard it. Yeah, told I, to me from individuals like it is a shit show. I have no desire to sign there. So you know they, you, you go there to die essentially. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. So as that, fans, as you're thinking, well, we need to go get this guy, or we need to go get these couple of guys. You need to to double click into that and, and make, ask the question, why would they want to come here? And if it's just for a paycheck, if we're going to overpay to get them, are we really getting guys that are passionate about winning? 
and about Terrible. putting it all out to turn this team around. And my thought is the way things stand today, no. <laughs> but Chuck, I don't know what you, what are your thoughts on all this? Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, you can, you can look at trying to get like a, I mean, if you're trying to get like right now, I think the only way that you can, uh, for the fans, okay, and, and to build this team over the next two or three years, you got to get a, a top of the rotation guy. You really cannot get, or you cannot have Patrick Sandoval as your number one going into the season, okay? Um, yeah, if he, coming off his 2022 season, it, he was great, but he struggled last year. A lot of guys struggled last year. Um, so you don't know what to expect, right? Cause you had one good year, one bad year. Um, you need a guy, uh, and maybe it's via a trade, a Corbin Burns, if they're, but what do we have to trade anymore? Right. I mean, we've depleted the farm system. You're going to have to trade capital from the actual major league roster, you know, and you may have to throw in a netto. Is that wise? No. Um, so I don't know. I mean, Really, you're, they're going to have to kind of go about the same way they did last year and piece together and put together a, a decent roster. They're going to have to get a DH. Um, obviously, you're not going to get a guy that hits 40 home runs and is of you know Otani's caliber, but a JD Martinez maybe would be a great great replacement ish, right? Um, if you're not going to get Snell, is Stroman a guy that's going to lead the way and be your ace of your rotation? I don't think so. I think he's a good addition. Um, so I, I is Bellinger. Bellinger's going to be an overpay. And he's got two or three. He had one good year, but he had three years in a row that were just garbage. And his swing is really long. Uh, it's not something that I would have any faith in. So I, I don't know. Um, trouble times. I feel like we're based on what Victor <laughs> said that we're we're getting into the '90s lean years ahead, where we're just going to have to count on the farm system and just fill in here and there with veterans. And it's sad uh, to say, yeah, it's it's not only sad; it's 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 awful to be perfectly honest with you to to kind of feel yeah. that way. And I, that's the look. And I think for, for most of the season, we've sat there and said, well, maybe if they do this and perhaps they're going to do that and nothing has played out, nothing, nothing, not nothing one has. thing as, <laughs> as we try to lay out with some sort of rose colored glasses that, oh yeah, you know, no, the glass is half full or, you know, they're going to turn the corner and no, there hasn't been anything to be perfectly honest with you. And maybe that's, maybe that's what they're going to be content doing. You know, maybe there is no plan to, to really spend a lot of money. And right. if that's the case, um, and I know that it's not in his nature, but you know, Mikey needs to step up and say, Hey, this is, this is not what I signed up for. Not the, not to demand right. a trade, but to put right. the pressure on ownership to sit there and go, let's, Let's go, man. I'm, I, yeah, I've been hurt the last couple of years, but I think I have a couple more years left. I want to make a run of it here. I moved here. I live here. I, I this is where I wanted to be. That's why I want the no trade. That's why I signed the long term contract. But Mikey's got Mikey or representation or somebody, you know, got to leak something out. Mike Trout's not happy. Whatever. Uh, to to force ownership to to crap or get off the pot. Yeah, I mean, that's what yeah. it boils down to. It's like either you're going to do something or you're not, you know, and because if you're going to do something, you're going to sign some, you know, guys that you think are, you know, marquee players that give you an opportunity to win because it's either that or sign middle of the road guys, which is essentially doing nothing. Right. Which they've done before this past year, Victor, signing these one-year contracts oh, every no year. Doubt. No one doubt. One-year contract after one-year contract after one-year contract. Which is both- which is fine if it's guys if you have the mindset of. I think that he can help me uh, compete this year, and at the same time, if we're not in it, 
has value to where I can flip him to get another younger piece. That I'm fine with that because teams yeah. do that all the time. And that's just smart business, especially when you're talking about the 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th spot in the roster, you know, in right. that range. And you're not locked in anything long term. I totally get or a one year with a, a mutual option, whatever the case may be. But because you have to have that, you you have to have some sort of roster flexibility. Because the last thing you want to do, you sign five guys at three year deals and they all suck or four of them suck. And it's like, how do you move four sucky dudes that still have two years left on these contracts? They're albatrosses. You know what I'm saying? Right. So so that's why you have to kind of sign those those one year, and those are usually, you know, the 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 middle infielder, fourth or fifth outfielder, the reliever, um, guys coming back from injuries and the like. That's 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 kind of that that's why you have to do that kind of stuff. So. But but if you're if you're cutting up the the pie in thirds, right? You're you're all in whatever that definition is. Uh, we're gonna not do anything, and in the middle of it is that uh, we're just gonna we're gonna have filler guys. Well, really, it's two thirds of that pie is you're not doing anything. You know, yeah. you're you're hoping and praying right. that you catch lightning in a bottle and all the other teams tank. You know. Yeah. And I think that's the the rock and hard place that the Angels find themselves in because they've put themselves in that position. Yep. That's this isn't yep. anybody's doing. You know, nobody put a gun to their head to hey, you know, don't go sign Joe Hay or don't trade Joe. Like this is this all internal discussions all happened. You guys made these decisions. What did you think was going to happen? Yeah, you know, like how do you game plan this? You know, you. But your parents used to tell you all the time, you're trying to make a decision, right? All right, let's take a piece of paper, split the column. Pros, yeah. cons, <laughs> right? Number one, mm -hmm. pro, awesome player, Shohei. Yeah. Con, ooh, marketing dollars going out the door. You know, it's like, and you have this list and you make the decision based on which way you think is best for the organization. But you, if you decide to go with the con list and you're not going to sign it, then all right, what's the contingency plan? Right. Yeah. What's the contingency plan? And I don't know and if I, anybody knows that, to be perfectly honest no, with you. I know. And and really the the only way I think that you're gonna again, the Angels need not just a big bat. They they kind of need a left-handed big bat in the lineup too, right? You look at this lineup, you got Modiac. Shanuel is not gonna be a guy that's gonna be a middle of the order guy. He's probably gonna lead off. And you got Renhifo. And that's it. Yeah. So I I have I don't think Bellinger's a guy, unless you're giving him I a don't one year a one year yeah. deal or and even you know, Jock Peterson's not even close to the player no, he wants one. You know, it's just I, I look There's I, nobody there's nobody out unless you trade make a trade with the, and this is what I was thinking, make a trade with the twins. They were they're wanting to shed some payroll. Uh Kepler Polanco. Those are two guys. They're even throwing Byron Buxton, who I don't know. I mean, Always he's another oft-injured guy. Yeah. yeah. But maybe a Kepler Polanco guy to take, you know, some uh payroll off the twins. You could probably get them for fairly cheap. Um Yeah, but they're so, gonna want they're gonna want some talent in return. I don't think they're just gonna take it as salary relief. Uh, maybe they will because of the whole maybe television deal. Salary relief, it's possible, yeah. but like who are you giving up, you know? And, yeah. you know, Max, you'd have to give up Ward, which is fine because we got enough right handed bats. But Max and has you, calmed down a lot of late, you know, from his I numbers. I think he hit 24, 24 bombs last year. Polanco in. Yeah, uh, don't just look at the bombs. You know, what well, know. What are his numbers? You know what I'm saying? What's his on base percentage? What's his strikeout rate? You know, I, I don't well, I know. I, I hate looking at guys as like, oh, he's, you know, he had 24 bombs. That's great. But he struck out 175 times. I'm like, well, then go sign Joey Gallo. That's the case. Right. Well, no. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, he had, yeah. he had a, all right, 332 on base percentage. He had a down year the year before. Uh, right. 816 OPS. I mean, if he, if he's, you know, if he's, if he is able to maintain that, he's 30, 31. Um, yeah, it might be worth it. Just depends on the number from a salary perspective. But again, right? You know, is he going to put you over the top again? Is is right. a Kepler a guy? Even a Polanco and Kepler. If you did Kepler Polanco and you added to the bullpen and you added a Snell or traded for Bur or Burns, then we're talking, right? Uh, or you did a Montgomery Snell. I mean, 
to your point earlier, uh, Victor, you lose Otani, you got to reach for the, you, you're going for the, you got to go to the top. I mean, you got to get these guys that are going to, you know, that are going to contribute and, and are going to get you hopefully to the promised land. None of these guys that are maybe, you know, one year here, good, you know, I don't know. I, I just, I think the angels need some name guys. But none of them are going to want to come here. That's, well, that's... maybe the Ron Washington factor, hopefully. You have to you have to show maybe you're gonna have to maybe, make a signing. You're gonna have to make a signing or a move that shows that these guys the want the world here, yeah. that they're serious. Yeah, I mean that's right. really what it is. Um, or a trade <laughs> that shows, hey, we just got a top guy. Yeah, whether it's on the offensive side or a pitcher. But back yeah, I, to I, your I, point from earlier, who do you give up for that? Because right. they don't have. <sighs> They don't have the talent. They don't have the the minor league system that's that has anything of of strong value that's right. going to allow you to make those moves. Yeah, this is yep. a shit show, folks. I mean, there's not a lot of good here. news here. This is our Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody! <laughs> gosh. Oh my gosh. Like, uh... Uh, one of my favorite Christmas movies is Bad Santa. It's like that's just drink and just yes. cost all. That's it because that's that's what you feel like, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Again, the free agent market is thin, and um, it's like where are you putting your dollars? And I think that's that's. I don't know. I'm not holding out any hope, but I think. Uh, if I was going to, I think if I was going to go out and try to sign somebody, and I don't know what kind of deal it's going to get, but I, I like what Jordan Montgomery did last year. I do um, too. And I, I don't know that he's going to command the same. He shouldn't, but you never know. Um, I still feel like one starting pitcher, a reliever. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know that you have to go out and get a big bat. Um, do you take a flyer on a, like a Reese Hoskins coming back from injury and, and, and Hoskins can play the outfield too. He can do yeah, outfield. I, 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 yeah. I, so like in my mind, I was thinking the, the one thing that popped in my head and I don't know, I've always liked him just as a player. I like his versatility too. And fits in at the top of the order is Whit Merrifield. Merrifield. Yeah. Um, and so and again, this is just me spitballing. If, if if you look at that, then can you flip? What can you get for Renhifo? Um, because then you have some, you've got some coverage in the infield at second base. Uh, Drury is a guy that can fill in for you at third base if Rendon's not ready or is bad again or whatever the case may be. Wick can play the outfield too, play some center field. Um, and then you move Renhifo, get some of that money off, because uh, he's arbitration eligible, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't yeah. know what his projected number is, but you know, can can you move maybe maybe for like a Kepler, like like would that, you know, Renhifo and whatever the package is for like a Kepler. And again, type of guys are they big name guys? No, right. but does it make this team better and a little right. bit more? Uh, mm -hmm. A little bit more sound, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I still think you need to go out. Like I said, you de you definitely have. If you add a reliever that's got some closing experience, and it doesn't have to be Josh Hader. I know he floated his name out, but if you've got a guy like that to go with what you already have in the pen as far as fireballers, add Jordan at the front end of the rotation, and then you had you know I don't know add a couple of guys to the lineup, whether it's via trade or via free agency or a combination thereof. You know, take your chances if you're not going to spend big money. But there's no big money guys to go spend. I mean, it's like you're going to no. go overpay for Bellinger, who no. was awful, and then had one resurgent year. You're going to pay for the one year. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I just, I don't, I don't see it. But then again, here we are talking about this kind of the same old, same old. And yeah. um, you know, I'm just trying to come up with some sort of a. <laughs> I hey positive Victor, I've looked you, you know. I've looked at all the players, all the guys that could be traded. Obviously, everybody on in free agency, and 
unless Perry pulls something wild, right, in a trade, I'm just not seeing it. The only guys that I I saw is that uh, the Twins came out and said that, or not the Twins, but uh, Porter came out and said that they're looking to shed some payroll in that Kepler and Polanco. Those are two guys that bat left-handed, I, and they have some power. Um, maybe you can flip Renjifo and award something else for both of those guys, right? To your point, sign Jordan Hicks for the back end of the bullpen to go with Estevez and Soriano, Ben Joyce. Um, and you get a Jordan Montgomery who's going to be a lot less expensive than a Snell, right? If you can't land Snell. And then you look at it on paper, not too shabby. Maybe you even get a J.D. Martinez or a Hoskins for the D.H. spot. So Martinez isn't going to play the field. Hoskins can play first base and left field. So there's that. So I'm not overly worried about the D.H. spot because, you know, Mike, Mike should D.H. more um, just to get mm-hmm. him off his feet. And now that you have that opportunity to do it, uh, it just makes yeah. sense. So if you can and you could find put Moniak a, in center field, Moniak right, looked if you good could find the field. way to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle in there. So where Mikey's, you know, and I don't know if he wants to do it or if he's willing to do it. I think he'll do what's best. Um, but I think if you get off your feet and you get, try to get maximum offensive production from him, I think, I think you're better off that way. You know, I just, and, and look, the wild card is, does Rendon come back and actually, you know, is Washington Nationals Rendon? Right. You know, right. is that if, if a lot that's of what the case? Is. If that's the case, then you know you, you don't really need a Cody Bellinger. You need more of the Kepler types to kind of fill your lineup and balance it out a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but if you're banking on it, if you think with your coaching staff and the conversations you had that Anthony's going to be the guy and he's going to be ready to go and whatever then I think that's the mindset you have to have as opposed to going on and saying, oh, we got to go get a J.D. Martinez. Or, I, don't, I don't think so. I think there are other guys you can use in that lineup via trade or otherwise that can kind of balance you out. I, that's just my personal opinion. It doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot, but that's how I look at it rather than going out and spending stupid money on a guy that, you know, a short-term deal. And it, you know, maybe, maybe it is a one-year deal for a J.D. Martinez or, you know, he's kind of at yeah. that stage of his career where it's one year deals, kind of like Nelson Cruz was doing towards right. the tail, end, tail yeah. end of his career. Um, but we'll but he, he, he only hit 33 bombs last year for the Dodgers. And, you know, he's a guy that's got a lot of oppo uh, power to right yeah. field. And we got that short line in right field. Just saying. I mean, he actually may hit more home runs in Anaheim than he did for the Dodgers. So I can see that. I can yeah. see that. Spacious ballpark in Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. Just so. don't get just don't get marine layered. <laughs> you know, that's, that yeah, no marine layered sucks. Yeah. You know, Victor, you said something earlier that has just been in my brain. I can't get it out. Sorry, bro. Talking about Otani and you know how we should have traded him and um, and I thought, can you imagine if we raided the Dodgers system? Okay, before the deadline, we got all their top prospects. We're looking good. We actually played well down the stretch without Otani. Otani go to the Dodgers. They still fuck it up in the playoffs and don't advance. And yet Otani's looking like, hmm, we got some of their best top guys. And they're, they are actually making a move to improve for the future. Right. And I want to win. And I've been with this team and I feel kind of disjointed here in LA, you know, whatever. And we could have rated their. They got. They have. They're one of the best farm systems in baseball, mm-hmm. and we could have rated them of their top guys. Some of the one of the guys that just went to the, the Rays. Yeah, uh, we're glass now. So anyway, I know we have uh, a couple just, of minutes left, but it, 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 the, the interesting thing about that, if I, if I remember correctly, now is you're you're kind of flashing back at the, the trade thing. Wasn't there a story or somebody said that Shohei? had asked or mentioned that he didn't want to be traded, preferred to not be traded. Was that, yeah. was that not a subject of conversation that we I remember was. that bubble? We up, discussed, yeah. right. And I think yep. one of my replies was like, uh, okay, gives a shit. awesome. Right. That's cool. Uh, we're still going to do what's best for the organization. <laughs> right. Um, again, that, that goes back to the whole reading of the room or the misreading of the room that you've got to, you've got to put the organization first and foremost. 
I mean, if you are putting all eggs in one basket, um, you know, if things don't work out, then you're screwed. Well, hello, it's December 21st and you're the angels and you're kind of SOL right now because you put all your eggs in that one basket. Um, but as my mom used to say, you know, you make your bed, you got to lie in it, right? Yep. Yep. Now there is redemption. There is redemption. You, you go out there and actually do what you say you're going to do and put a competitive team on the field and supplement the guys that you currently have without trading any of the core so that right. fans have some hope going into 24 and beyond. Uh, and then, you know, roll the dice and see where you go. But until they do that, it's like, yeah, we'll see. We'll and did see. you hear the report before we wrap this up? Did you hear the report that Artie actually nixed that, that trade that Perry had something lined up and, uh, and Artie nixed it? Well, I mean, I'm not surprised because the, like, again, like Artie yep. is the ultimate decision maker. Um, and that's why it's very difficult to get certain individuals to <laughs> take a job or go interview for a job and, and the like. And right. um, I look, man, unless like, it would not surprise me at all if, if the team were to be put back on, on the market for sale, it, it really wouldn't, it, it just wouldn't it feel, this, it feels that way. It, it, Cause why wouldn't you at this point? Yeah. It's you the know? only yeah. thing that makes sense right now. It, why, why wouldn't you? It just would, it wouldn't surprise me, but also wouldn't surprise me. if all of a sudden say, Hey Perry, go sign uh, Blake Snell and JD Martinez and Cody Bellinger, you know, <laughs> <laughs> seriously. It's, it's like, that's, that's the gamut that we're that we're run. It's like you just and you know what, Victor is the odds of that fan. happening are slim and none. But I just I know <laughs> I'd put more money on the sale than I would on you know the latter. Yeah. All right. Well, well, gents, we're we're at time now. Any last what what's going on with Christmas for both of you? Any any Christmas plans or Christmas memories you'd like to share before we wrap real quick? Just Tradition. with the family. That's it. Traditions. Yeah. That's it. yeah. 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 Same. Um, Going to my dad's with uh, on Christmas Day with my boys and my sisters and, and their kids and uh, a lot of white elephant gifts. It's going to be fun. Nice. <laughs> what do nice. you cook, Jeff? What's the main dish uh, for Christmas? So I'm always in charge of deviled eggs and wine. Like, that's what I'm entrusted with. Nice. I, make, I make a kick-ass deviled egg. Nice. So oh, that's, that's my thing. But I signed up for um, for mac and cheese as a side uh, this year. So I need to I need to dig in and find my mom's old mac and cheese recipe to, to have that. But yeah, deviled eggs, wine. I'm that's I'm always inked in for that. What about you, Victor? What's your main main dish? We go out to dinner. Wow. We go out to dinner on Christmas <laughs> Eve. We go to okay. a, we do a steakhouse thing. Uh, I think this year we're just going to buy some tenderloins and, and cook them here and just stay at the house. And then Christmas Day, uh, we'll just watch football and then go over to my parents' house. One of the first, I can't remember the last time we didn't travel for the holidays. You know, having moved down to Florida, we're we're here by my parents and brothers, and then Kim's parents are an hour and a half away in Naples or in uh, Fort hmm. Myers. Jesus oh. Christ, Fort Lauderdale. I live in Fort Myers. My parents live in Naples. <laughs> She's from Fort Lauderdale. It's on the other coast. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's it's nice just being able to just chill and not have to get on a plane and deal with airports and all that stuff. So uh, we'll eat nice. a bunch of Cuban food and I'll probably make a flan uh, oh, for Christmas wow. Day. There yeah. you go. That's great. Very nice. Yeah, so I usually do an Italian feast. I, I was the student in the kitchen when my grandma Fusco was uh, – making all of her Italian dishes over the years when I was a kid. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Homemade meatballs, sausage, her marinara sauce. Oh yeah. It's good. That's awesome. Pasta Love salad. It. It's good yeah. stuff. And then I we would, open uh, gifts on Christmas. Yeah. You open on Christmas Eve? Or yeah, Christmas we, we, open, we open gifts us on uh, midnight at Christmas Eve. Yeah. Oh, it's an Italian thing. Thing. yeah. We'll, do, we'll do one on yeah. Christmas Eve and then the rest on mm -hmm. Christmas morning. But just the Italian thing, uh, Kim's obviously – her maiden name's Conti, so she's Italian. And when oh, we first started dating okay. twenty some years ago, her mom used to be the one that we went to their house, and it was um, 
homemade gnocchi. Uh, you had ravioli, oh, and, then, oh. and, then, and then the tenderloin. You know, for the the main oh, course. Yeah. So there it was you go, fantastic. And she retired from cooking years ago. So, uh, but Kim's yeah. done a nice job of, of of picking up the slack. That's good. I do a yeah. prime rib on Christmas Day. We just hang nice. out, watch football, just chill. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Well, boys, Merry Christmas to you and to everyone Merry listening. Merry Christmas to uh, both of you. Happy this holidays, Merry year. Christmas, whatever Let's it is. Yeah. Celebrate uh, the twenty twenty four brings us something. That, uh, we appreciate more you listening and watching to talk on about YouTube this and, uh, episode. <laughs> stick around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry for bringing you down this holiday season. Yeah. yeah so. It is what it is. Yeah. All right. All right. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry okay, Christmas. Guys. Cheers. Angel fly. Angel fly. Thank you for listening to the Angels Win podcast with Victor Rojas, Chuck Richter, and Jeff Stoddart. Go Halos and drive home safely. Say goodbye.